Do you want your photos to no longer have that plastic shiny skin look like this? To turn them into photos with realistic skin details like this? Do you want to upscale your photos from SD resolution to 4K? Or maybe you want to generate images four times faster while using less VRAM on your computer. So, congrats! I'm here to guide you on how to make that happen. Hello everyone, I'm Sotai. As I mentioned in the previous video, once you've successfully generated images with Flux, I'll share some techniques to optimize your results and meet more of your needs. If you're not sure how to set up Flux, you can check out the video link I've included in the description. Alright, let's get started. Now that you have successfully generated an image with Flux, I will introduce a few techniques to optimize the results and better meet your additional requirements. First, let's talk about quality. As you can see, while the generated image is highly detailed, the character skin still appears too smooth, plastic-like, and overly bright, making it clear that the image is AI-generated. I will try generating another image by changing the seed value. As you can see, the issue still persists. Clearly, this is a problem related to the quality of the Flux model. To address this issue, one effective method is adjusting the guidance scale. Let's compare the output quality of the image using the default guidance scale of 3.5 and a lower guidance scale of 2.0. With a lower guidance scale, the skin texture improves significantly, looking more realistic and detailed. Compared to the results with a guidance scale of 3.5, we can clearly see this difference. However, reducing the guidance scale too much can sometimes cause the model to not follow the prompt accurately. From my experience, experimenting with a guidance scale between 1.8 and 2.3 will help you find the best balance between realism and prompt adherence. Next, I will guide you on how to enhance the resolution of images generated by the Flux model. As you can see, by default, Flux produces images at a resolution of 1024 by 1024. If you want a highly detailed image suitable for uploading to social media, you need to increase the output resolution to 4K instead of just HD. To achieve this, we will use an upscale model as a supplementary step. This involves loading the upscale model into the upscale image node. Similar to base models like UNET or the text encoder, you need to download the upscale model weights from the link provided in the description and place them in the corresponding folder. After that, connect the output image from Flux to the upscale node to perform the upscaling process. I will also use the preview image node to check the results. Click the Q button and wait for the workflow to process. As you can see, the final image retains all the original details while maintaining integrity compared to the initial result, but the resolution has now been increased to 4096 by 4096. There will be multiple upscale models with varying quality. You can explore and replace the current model to find the upscale model that best suits your needs. After optimizing for image quality, the next thing you need to consider is image generation time. I'll try generating an image and let's see how long it takes Flux to generate. Oh, 05.864 means nearly 6 seconds for one image. To minimize generation time in diffusion models, what you need to focus on is reducing the number of steps in the denoising process. For example here, if I reduce the number of steps from 20 to 8, the generation time will be reduced by 60%. However, with that number of steps, the image generation quality won't be as desired. As you can see here, if we only generate with 8 steps, the image will be significantly blurred. To solve this problem, I'll introduce you to a technique called LoRa. This is a popular technique in generative models for customizing the base model according to desired tasks while maintaining model performance. To use LoRa in ComfyUI, I will use the LoRa Loader Model Only node. 
There are many LoRa's that support the Flux model, and here I will use a LoRa called Flux.1 Turbo Alpha. This LoRa allows us to generate an image with just 8 steps while achieving quality equivalent to 20 steps when inferencing with the base model. Similar to other models introduced, to use this you must download this LoRa from the link in the description and place it in the following folder. You will also need to adjust the pipeline slightly as follows for the LoRa to work. Now I will generate images and will check the speed and quality together. During the first generation, ComfyUI needs to load the LoRa model so it will take longer than usual, so I will generate images two more times to get an accurate assessment. Alright, the image generation took 2.349 seconds. Now let's take a look at the results. You can see that the blur and pixelation issues are completely gone even though we only used 8 steps for generation. The quality is noticeably better compared to earlier when we didn't use LoRa. Now, I'm going to try generating the image again without LoRa but this time with 20 steps just to check if reducing the generation time affects the quality compared to the usual process. Let's click preview and see how it turns out. See, the image quality is pretty much the same. There's nothing unusual between the 8-step and 20-step images. In fact, I even feel like the 8-step image looks sharper. So, by using LoRa, I've managed to speed up the image generation process by 3 times while still maintaining the same quality. Pretty impressive, right? Alright, now I'll show you how to optimize GPU memory usage so you can run the Flux model even on your personal computer. First, to compare the different versions, I'll add a node called Clean VRAM Used. This node is super helpful, it clears the cached model after each run, so we can accurately see how much VRAM is needed to generate an image. Okay, let's start by checking how much VRAM the default Flux pipeline uses. Click Q and take a look. The maximum VRAM usage is 25.81 GB. Now let's wait for the clean VRAM node to do its thing. Twenty five point eight one GB. That means you'd need a machine with at least 26 GB of VRAM to run the default version of the Flux model. Pretty expensive, right? To optimize VRAM, I'll introduce you to a technique called quantization model. This is a popular method in deep learning to significantly reduce the size of AI models while keeping performance mostly intact or accepting a small trade-off. ComfyUI already supports converting model values from float 16 to float 8. All you need to do is change the weight type here from the default float 16 to float 8. There are three float 8 types available and you can pick any of them since they'll use the same amount of GPU memory. Now, let's see how much VRAM the Float 8 version uses. See that? After switching the type to Float 8, the maximum VRAM usage dropped to just 15,065 megabyte. Now let's check the quality of the generated images. Oh, the quality is pretty much the same. So, we've managed to save nearly 10 gigabytes while keeping the image quality unchanged. Pretty awesome, right? But wait, there's more. Besides Float 8, there are now several quantized versions of the Flux model available in lighter formats with fewer bits for representation. You can grab those versions here. He's provided us with these amazing Flux versions in different sizes. All the versions 8-bit, 6-bit, 5-bit, 4-bit, 3-bit, and 2-bit are right here.
Now, I'll walk you through how to test these models. Here, I'll try the lightest one, Flux Q2K. Just like the other models, you'll need to download it and place it in the right spot using the following path. To use these models in Comfy UI, you'll need to install the custom GGUF node. Just click on Manager, go to Custom Nodes, search for GGUF, and install it. Once it's installed, you're ready to use the GGUF nodes. Here, I'll be using the Unit Loader GGUF. Pick the GGUF version you want to run and start generating images. Keep an eye on VRAM usage. Wow! The maximum VRAM is down to just 7,577 megabytes. Now let's check the image quality. It looks like the image quality has dropped a bit, but it's not too noticeable. You can try out the different versions here to find the one that best fits your needs. Alright, so with the Flux Q2K version, we've managed to lower the VRAM requirement to just 8GB. With this setup, you can easily generate images with Flux on your personal computer. That's awesome! Alright, so I've shown you some tricks to optimize your Flux results in Comfy UI. If you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment below. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for the latest tutorial videos. See you later. Goodbye!